Tonight we're going to talk about one of the historic patterns, uh, the seducer. Now seducers are just more or less a, a tail out of feathers and then a palmered collar out of uh, either a neck or out of a saddle hackle. Uh, and the beauty of this particular fly that uh, some fishermen don't know about or don't realize is it suspends beautifully in the water. Um, say for example you're you know you have a fish that hits your fly and you miss him. You miss the strip strike. The beauty of the seducer is you can stop stripping right there and leave it to uh, do a very very slow sink. Now a lot of times what the fish thinks is he's wounded the bait and then he'll come back around and nail it again give you a second chance and if he doesn't you know just give a couple of uh, short little tiny uh, strips and you know trigger him again or maybe trigger his buddy um, but we're not going to be tying a classic uh, classic seducer we're going to be tying it out of synthetics um, these EP fibers uh, are, uh, lend themselves to doing this. Um, we're going to work with just some standard EP and an Andromedas brush. Uh, we're going to start off with a half of a length, a fairly decent sized bundle of just white um, EP fiber. And I am going to thread till the thread just touches the uh, point of the hook. By the way, this is uh, Flymaster Plus in size 140 and hook is a Dairiki 930 number 4. Now I'm going to set this EP up on top so it's in a V'd pattern like that. Get it wrapped down tight. And make sure it's stacked nice and level on the hook. Now, I'm going to bring this Andromedas brush. These are available. Um, this is a, a white. I, I'm not sure of the exact color of it. And we're going to tie it. It's on a wire. And we're going to tie that in here in the back. And then I'm going to bring my thread forward pretty close to the eye of the hook. Now when you're working with this, trying to make a seducer anyway, you've got to get all the material on one side of the wire. And you can just do that by stroking it a little bit. We're going to start palmering this around the hook. You want it fairly close together, but not extremely tight. Um, and you want to make damn sure that you don't overwrap any of your previous wraps materials. You know, you want it buggy here in the front. And if you run over it with the previous wrap, it's going to get uh, flat real quick. And you just kind of pick this stuff out a little bit as you're doing your palmering. And we're working forward, trying to avoid getting stuck by the hook. Now I could use my rotary, but I wouldn't have the good control over the materials. Okay, I'm getting pretty close to my thread here. I'm going to go ahead and overwrap it. Tie it off. And because this has a wire in it, um, you definitely want to use a pair of cutters, not your scissors, on to clip this thing off. Put 
put a couple more thread wraps over it. And we're going to pick this out here in a second. But the last step on the construction is these are uh, plastic beads. You can buy them in rolls at Michael's Crafts. Um, these plastic beads will float. It's kind of convenient. We want a little bit of, uh, I'm going to add a little extra buoyancy here in the front. Give it some eyeballs, you might say. So I'm going to tie these on just like I would a barbell eye. A couple of X wraps. Doesn't take a lot. And I'm going to, a couple of wraps in front, and I'm going to whip finish this fly. Now, as you can tell, it's not looking real buggy. I mean, it's pretty flat looking. I'm going to take my comb, and I'm just going to kind of comb it out. This kind of gets the thing, all the fibers lined up together that are in a certain plane of the hook. Doesn't take a lot, but you can see it's getting a lot more buggy looking here. Okay, now we're still not quite completed with this. I'm going to pull all these fibers forward. And I'm going to trim this tail. Now, um, the look that I'm looking for is a shape very much like this. You know, with a point at the end, except the other direction. Point at the end, and kind of rounded here in the front. Um, I'm going to step aside for just a moment and go ahead and trim that and then I'm also going to hit it with some markers um, to kind of brighten it up a little bit I'll be back in just a couple of minutes okay I'm back as you can see I marked the tail I used a black thin marker to uh, give it some lines and then just ahead of that black line it's pretty faint it's hard to see but I've got a real pale gray um, both of these are Copic markers um, the gray black is obvious but the gray is a neutral 4 you could probably use a little bit darker one a neutral 5 it'd probably be a little darker um, maybe a little bit more visible than this gray as you can see, I've picked this collar out. It's nice and buggy. Um, and again, just kind of push it back a little bit. Now, be sure and carry a comb with you on your uh, in your fly vest as you're fishing and to help comb this out so it catches the water and acts just like the uh, natural seducer. Anyway, this is the first part of a two-part. The second part of this is actually going to be this basic same fly, but it's going to be down and brown, and it's going to be for redfish. So look forward to that next one. Thanks.